Welcome back to RG. Jesse, what's up, man? Oh, well, it is that time of year that there are some uh, 2024 outlooks being being posted, and we've got uh, a pretty heavy slide deck today from Liz Ann Saunders of Charles Schwab. Yep, for sure. Before that, uh, make sure that you fund your 401k between now and year end. If you're getting a bonus, you know, you've got about two paychecks left to make sure you slide that money in there. 22.5 is the max if you're under 50. If you're 50 plus, the max is $30,000. Make sure you get everything you can toward uh, saving for the future. Absolutely. It'll help. I mean, again, it's one of those uh, do something for future you today. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, this is this is this is a problem for future you now. So that, make it great, happen. Well, future you will appreciate what you've done today. That's Indeed. For sure. yeah. All right. Here's uh, here's Lizanne uh, in her in her Charles Schwab shot. I, I really like Lizanne. She does a great job. Talks about a lot of really good stuff. The the subject of her uh, 2024 outlook is rolling recessions. And so it seemed like it would make sense for us to maybe go through some examples. What is a rolling recession, right? Right. So let's, I mean, like last year, technology companies did some layoffs. Well, to my knowledge, they're not laying off this year. I don't think they are. And, and, you know, they were the biggest, um, they they took the biggest hit, I think, predominantly. Even the biggest companies that we've seen shine this year. Right. And so they're a prime example of a two-year span of of them already experiencing that rolling recession in the technology sector and then coming out of it. Yeah, let's let's look at housing for a minute. And this chart is a little bit more dramatic, perhaps, than than it's been. But what you'll see back in that 2021 time period, kind of everything on the right, you'll see a big old crest, right? And that's That's monthly measurements of year-over-year price increases in houses. And it probably wouldn't surprise you that that peaked out in that 21, 22-type time period, summer of 22. And then it came off pretty hard, and we got back to where you even saw in in the 20 largest cities um, a negative there for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But now you're back at at 3.92%. In fact, here's a a chart of – uh, those 20 cities. And I mean, crazily, year over year, the leader is Detroit. Hey, man, D-Town. Uh, up about 6.7%. Those 20 cities in aggregate have a year over year change of 3.9%. So, I mean, that's an example of housing went down last year. Mm-hmm. It seems to kind of, at least for existing home sales, which are about 80% of the the home sales in the United States, from my understanding. Um, I mean... They're up. They are. Yeah. And, and and again, I think some of that has to do with uh, supply. And, and obviously, there was a slowdown because of rate increases and everything else. But uh, those that have the means are finding themselves, what we've said earlier, you know, marrying the house and dating the rate. So, yeah. And, and, you know, so if the economy does slow, here's the big question, right? Oh, well, I mean, you know, if the economy slows, it's bad for the housing market. Really? If rates roll over, is that bad? Because because last year, if price increases stopped or even went negative, well, now we're in a situation where, you know, rates rates are definitely higher, right. although they've come off a little bit. They're still higher than they were a year ago. Yep. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think to me, it's a matter of, uh, you know, this is the truth if you already own a home, right? So I'm glad that I own a home. Yeah, right. Uh, there's maybe the difficult difficulty of uh, price affordability, especially if we're we're in a weak economy, that. right? Uh, that if if uh, house prices continue to rise, it does not make them more affordable, despite the fact that maybe rates come down. Yeah. So uh, it's it's one of these weird dynamics, and I think it's it speaks to the confusion of this time because if we go to this next slide here's a new home builders and they are not very positive right now so the national association of home builders housing market index is 900 builders that get surveyed and if they're bullish on new houses uh the index is above 50 if they're kind of bearish or sort of negative on what's going on with new houses it's below 50 and look where it is 34 right yeah now here's what's interesting you go back to like 1990 that's probably the best example of a garden variety type recession Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. i mean it made it down to what the 25 ish range and who knows you know i mean where it is now but it looks like that gray bar we entered recession kind of near where 
that index Where stands we're at now. Right now. Right. And I mean, look, it's anecdotal, right? But at the end of the day, it, it is notable. New home builders feel somewhat negative. It and that could be for a lot of reasons. It could, it could be. be the consumer. It could be a squeeze on credit conditions for them where banks won't lend them money. It could course, be, you know, hard memories from the 08 market. Yeah. Right? For sure. So. For sure. It could be all those things. Which, you know, again, if supply is squeezed, right. that pushes home prices Back, up. Yeah. Not down or at least stabilizes. Right. Them. All right. So let's move on to other examples that Liz gives in her presentation. One of them was I, uh, manufacturing new orders, right? Like new orders have been going down basically for over a year now. Mm -hmm. And you can see, looking backwards, take 1990 and 2000 yet again, we're kind of in that same-ish time period, right? Now, the one thing I will say is that if you pay attention to inventories on the other side, Inventories numbers actually look like they're being extremely well managed. Why? Well, this thing's been going in slow motion. Right. Right. Again, that, I think that's that's probably the key to the rolling recession. Right. Is that uh, it? And because you know the the Fortune 500 companies are so well managed anymore, you make a point that you know the management of those things are are much more tight because they don't want to lose their shirt over right. having overbought or, or otherwise and technology some of that too sure, right sure. i mean technology helps manage inventories but you know the the leaders of these companies have generally gotten the memo right, right? that's right about the concern for recession okay so moving on uh, lizanne goes on to talk about the leading economic index and by the way we're going to put the link to this in um the notes below yep. Go check it out. I mean, all these slides are there. You can read exactly from Lizanne's lips what she's saying. But these are the very important points that that we think you should really take away, right? Like, so, for example, the leading economic index been in a steady decline for 19 consecutive months. That's, of which I think some of the things that we've just looked at are, are feed into the leading economic index numbers. Yeah. yeah and, and you can see in this chart that goes back to 1959, I mean, you get pullbacks like we've had, that's been pretty cons commensurate with potentially having a recession, right? And, and that's what she's saying. And, and in fact, I think the average time frame leading up to a recession from the peak of this leading economic indicator is um, eleven. Is months. about eleven months. Which, yeah. Right. So okay. So so let's let's put that in comparison to um, the, the next piece, which is yield curve inversion. Right. So the yield curve's been inverted uh, now for thirteen months. Mm -hmm. Okay. And our friend Darius Dale at Forty Two Macro talks about this, and basically. His point is that, listen, usually when you have a 10-year minus three-month uh, T-bill mm -hmm. uh, yield curve inversion, which means the three-month is higher than the 10-year, ultimately, within 13 to 18 months, you have a recession. Well, it inverted in October of 22, so 13 months would be November of now 23. Right. Yeah, that's right. Which is why he's saying the highest probability for recession would be between November of 23 and and call it May of 24, right? Mm -hmm. Again, nobody knows whether we're going to have a recession or not. So I mean like housing had, you know, had had issues last year, right? But does it all have to happen at once? Yeah, across the entire economy it may not, and that might be just the difference of this economic cycle versus past economic cycles. Uh, but between the leading economic indicators and the yield curve inversion, there are some warning signs that continue to persist. And we're hitting kind of those um, outer bounds of the normal time frame in which those things would present themselves. Yeah. So next chart, yield curve inversions. The average time until a recession starts is 13 months in Lizanne's chart. Now, she also points out that stock returns can be actually pretty good during that the time The average period. and the median are positive leading up to that recession. That's exactly right. Right. With two negative years in there. But what I will say is that, I mean, if a recession started now, uh, you know, this period of time has produced, uh, what, the second biggest gain in, mm -hmm. in that chart list. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll see. Um, all right. So Lizanne goes on to give a best case scenario for... Uh, 2024. And one of the things she says is, look, I mean, rolling recessions lead to rolling recoveries. I think that's true. I think that that is an optimistic view. That's exactly right. And and something to be uh, to hang on to as 
an attempt to kind of navigate through this thing. Well, housing might be an example of that's, that. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once the economic path's clearer, um, it should bode well for groups that have failed to participate in the advance since the bear market low in October of 22. Well, yeah, you've got a good chart on this because I think this is what we've talked about so much this year is that, you know, one part of the economy has really, really sh- shown this year and, and, and done very, very well. The, whereas, most, uh, the most unlikely one, yeah. which is the one that should be getting its butt kicked with in, higher rates, with higher rates. Right, right. And yet. And yet that's not what's worked. So you look at the list of companies or the list or types of companies that Lizanne's referring to, small caps, dividend paying stocks, lower volatility stocks, bank stocks, just the equal weight index even in the last year is is, is negative flat as a pancake. Mm-hmm. So and I mean look at regional banks, they're down thirty two percent. Crushed, right. Now, lower rates would definitely help them, but <laughs> On their balance sheet, I mean, typically a higher rate environment does help them. And I think that that's what people, you know, piled into at the beginning of the year before, you know, it it became uh, obvious that they had mismanaged their balance sheet with longer duration bonds. But uh, all that's to say is if you believe what Lizanne is saying, these ought to do, you know, or have the, the, the chance of doing better in the coming year. And that's, again, that's something to, uh, keep an eye on and and hopefully participate so in. our friend Willie Dell, which kind of makes the point that, you know, industrials, which happens to be the least concentrated sector in the S&P 500, uh, is back to its underperformance relative to technology lows that occurred back around the year 2000, meaning, you know, tech stocks ramped mm-hmm. into the year 2000. And then industrials relative to tech started to outperform. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see if it happens yeah, this time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So Lizanne finally, you know, makes the point, hey, listen, you know, we've got some runway for upside, but, I mean, we may have to ha- go through some economic pain nearer term. Um, usually when the Fed starts cutting rates, it's because there's a reason to cut rates. That's right. So it's going to be interesting to see certainly how that unfolds. Now, cutting rates would be very good for bonds. That's right. For Absolutely, sure. Absolutely, yeah. So whether we own bonds for our clients or whether we own bonds with equity money, mm-hmm. either way, I mean, there are going to be some things to potentially own, you know, going I, I mean, it year. should do well for dividend-paying stocks as well, right? And that I think you people think. fled that because of the safety of bonds uh, having gotten a, a, a much better rate. And uh, some of those dividend yields are pretty high. So, yeah, there are parts of um, the market set that have not performed very much this year. But given what she's saying, there's opportunity. There, There's always a bull market somewhere. Right. right? Isn't, that, isn't that what they say? And so uh, I think it's the management of those things and a diversified strategy that will help navigate these, you know, challenging times. Yep. Well... Uh, that's all I got from that. I'll share with you what I've been watching. I've been watching the Tigers uh, beat the Gamecocks. <laughs> Our guys lost his uh, lost his band aid. Yeah, the band aid is gone. Yeah. We we uh, had a November to remember, so that was there good. There you go. You you uh, you did uh, you bought all the stock you could of uh, that's right. Tiger football. Dabo, that's baby. Dabo. Yeah, that's okay. exactly right. What are you watching? Uh, I'm watching my kids and uh, and and relatives and friends come into town. I, there was not a whole lot of TV watching as we prep for Thanksgiving and, and had a lot of people over. But we survived and uh, turkeys made out, and so I did my part. And uh, you know now we're on to Christmas, a quiet Christmas, a quiet house. Christmas. That's right. That sounds good. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching as always. We're grateful to you. Uh, please do make sure to subscribe. Click the bell if you want to be notified when we post. I can promise you, you get little pop-ups in the bottom of your screen. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And you can save it for later or watch it right then. Whatever suits you, just, just give it a watch. Thank you as always. We'll talk to you soon.